<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the Role Players Guild. <laughs> we are here with the finale of Falcons over the Underdark mini one shot campaign thingy. One shot. Um, and then I believe it was decided after, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, next we will be playing, uh, um, Avatar The Last Airbender. I think that's what it was oh, voted we? on. Uh, yeah. Oh. I, think that, I think that's the one that officially r run the polls once when people started taking back votes because they voted <laughs> for everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw that, like, everyone voted for, like, three different things. Like, you guys are going to have to figure out how to do a tiebreaker somehow. And then people start taking back votes. I'm like, okay, thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's what ended up winning. So, um, but I believe Squeebs will not be here in two weeks so we'll probably start with that in four weeks instead Hooray. so that'll give i know that's a long time for this camp uh for this, that'll give i know that's a long time for this camp uh for this group to be playing but that'll mm -hmm. give everyone enough time uh doug i believe is running that one so it gives him enough time to get it all set for us it gives oh. us all time to figure out how to make characters and to actually make our characters that's true that's um, true and one big change to this group is we're getting a new member joining us for uh beginning with the uh um. the avatar campaign <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. She, uh, she kind of sucks, but, you know, she was just <laughs> begging me to play in more games, so I let her be a part of it. It's fine. She's going to be the non-bender of the party. <laughs> the non-bender. Yeah. She's going to be the Soka. The Sokka. Sokka. Uh. More like Sokka, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I totally just M. Night shyamalan you all. <laughs> 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 there is no movie in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, we are going to have Butterscotch Kimmy joining us, joining this Woo Thursday group because she just can't get enough of playing TTRPGs like the rest of us, so she has to insert herself yeah. into every group. I don't got a problem. No. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We all protested, but she wormed her way in. There. I know. She brought. <laughs> she bribed me. That's what it was. Yep, I'll do it. Uh, but for tonight, we are finishing up over the underduck. Oh, I'm not even like centered in where I wanted to be centered in on. My bad, because we were talking about <laughs> what the plan was. There we go. Um. Tonight we are focusing on the finale of Over the Underdark, and that yeah. means I am going to hand it off to Falcon to remind yes. us what the heck was going on, and so... to lead us to victory or death. Well, well I think you know for some of us. Yeah, well... one of us has plot armor. Or semi plot armor. You could just <laughs> not end up returning as Ephriel to that campaign. As uh, yeah, I and can't like, play like an idiot. <laughs> it, it is a technical possibility. <laughs> Technically, I haven't rejoined the campaign yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. We'll right. see where where it takes us. Um, yeah, wild and crazy road. Uh, thank you all for sticking with us. Um, but yes, so last we left off, everyone, um, you had in your trek through the underground tunnels of the Underdark, making alliances with uh, neutral parties and uh, eventually coming across or trekking over the acid pits 
fighting for your lives against the uh, hungry denizens of the Underdark, and then making your way to what appeared to be a like a um, border, not border, uh, like an app. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Completely spaced. Well, like a, an outpost of sorts uh, outside of the city perimeter. Um, this uh, central hub of Dwargar uh, populace, known as Durnt, um, had been taken over by some sort of alien creature. Um, the informant, the minister of the blackened cloth that you managed to interrogate uh, informed you all of that the city was taken over um, and essentially warned you to either flee or do whatever you wanted but he managed to lock the main entity away in mining uh, district of the city um, you all decided to make your way into the city proper, uh, where we see yourselves now. This is a, um, a bit of a suburb of the city. It's a smaller sublet, if you will, of the uh, entire city itself. Um, and you had noticed uh, a very odd, strange occurrence that the city was completely, or at least this portion of the city, was completely void of any sort of uh, no Dwargar, no ministers, nothing. Uh, just completely empty. But what you did notice was there a selection or a collection of large writhing purple black tentacles that were emerging and um, keeping kind of like hold, holding on to pieces of a dwarven key that would be used to uh, open up the mining district. These tentacles as essentially um, coveting these portions of keys to try and prevent anybody from gaining access to uh, the, the mining district. Um, you went about destroying and dispatching these tentacles, but had noticed that with each death, the next tentacle had evolved and essentially adapted itself to the previous mode or previous form of termination. So um, slashing damage ended up uh, having these tentacles develop uh, thick calloused armor around its skin. Uh, piercing damage, lightning damage, you know, all these forms had created a e immunity to that damage type. So you've all been experimenting, finding new forms of combat to defeat these last remaining tentacles. Uh, Droskvar had summoned a pack of seven wolves which I have depicted as hyena for right now. But he had to uh, summon this huge pack of wolves to try and sniff out and find where the last three remaining tentacles uh, resided in the city, and therefore allow you to complete your construction of the key to gain access to the mining district. Now... You all stand at the edge of a bridge that leads on to the other side of the city. Um, and there are a number of dogs, or wolves, I should say, that you see kind of hanging outside of this house and this house. Um, at this point, I think you all can see where the tentacles are anyway. They look like the, the gray and red... Yeah, someone yeah, uh, someone uh sent out animals. I think it might have been Virgil's That's character, yep. and yep. the animals 
found them for us and are kind of like standing guard right now. Yep, that's what I just said, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Sorry, what it actually happened. to pay was, attention to the recap. Yeah, I think what happened was last week Virgil summoned some animals and they actually found where the remaining. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, he was saying so, that you can now see them, so I was like, yes, we we can. Yes. No, I so, think I think what you're misunderstanding is that we can see them now. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> so yeah, you guys pretty much know uh, through the communication of the uh, the wolves and Ruskvar's animal spirit, you all can uh, essentially figure out where these last remaining tentacles are hidden in the city. So go about your business. Let's uh, finish off these these tentacles. <clears throat> now, right. something else that you had have all noticed is that with each tentacle that you've dispatched, all the remaining tentacles have started becoming stronger, hitting harder, as they their consciousness is not spread as thin any longer. Okay, well... I can, uh, I can deal a little bit of fire damage, but it might take a while. <laughs> considering I don't have a good source of it. Do we want to try and smack it with uh with bludgeoning first and then try and finish it off with fire damage? Might be the best way to uh to get the kill. Right. Which Sally one are you good. guys going? Um I I guess my vote would be let's go left. Let's go left, get the get the two in the house. Yeah. Okay. All righty. I guess we're going to want uh, Pocket Turtle to probably try and kill right around the corner here. Well, sorry, we don't, I guess we don't know. We just know that it's in here, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the moment, I'm, I'm controlling Pocket Turtle. As you all can see, we are indeed missing our Virgil and Hope. Uh, they were just unfortunately unable to make it tonight, but with us delaying this week after week after week, um, they've essentially given us permission to just ghost control their characters, and we'll do our best. Um, so, yes, you have, this is the door right here. You yep. see two wolves that are, you know, uh, barking and, you know, alerting towards this door. Um, one... Uh, one side of the door is already ajar. Wait, is it a door or is it a jar? No, it's jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and right on cue, the thing I warned about. Hmm? Uh, I get to. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is <laughs> <shop vision. laughs> I saw this in a dark vision. It's been plaguing me for oh, years. Oh, it's... Uh, so, for those of you playing at home who, who don't know, I'm a truck driver. I'm in my truck. Uh, and I have a technician coming out to work on part of the truck. Uh, and he just got here. So, we get to go on a field trip while I figure out how to best get out of this guy's way. <laughs> Well, uh, well, while that's underway, we can. The rest of us. I've got my Bluetooth there. in, so I can hear the party and you know oh. yell at me, and I can roll dice. <laughs> no worries. Do what you got to do. All right, who's uh, who's entering? Who's uh, doing what? All right, so I guess well, the three. The, well, the, I'm assuming the three ways we're going to kill these. Does um. Does PT even have radiant damage? Do they have guiding bolt or something? Or they uh I remember she had like inflict wounds. I know she definitely has inflict wounds for the necrotic damage. Maybe. Do we actually have a source of radiant damage or would we I think maybe she has yeah. the um what's the she has sa called? Sacred Flame. Sacred, sacred flame. flame. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe she Oh, has yeah, I guess you can just stand back and cast Sacred Flame a hundred yeah. times. Yeah. It would yeah. She has that, she's got guiding bolt, she's okay. got everything. She's got all right. Well, I think 
we're probably again. All right, I guess I'll peek my head in here to to see where the uh, the oh. tentacle is exactly. Just kind of. So the second you peek your head through the door, uh, it's mere centimeters of a of a close call where the large, thick, stubbly, now like you know, highly textured uh, exterior of this tentacle lashes out and uh, attempts to swat at you the second you peek your head through the door. Um, okay. Being cautious and, you know, slowly trying to look through, you are able to avoid uh, its swat. I have um, been hit by one too many attacks and trying to open the door uh, yeah. on this journey, so... Uh, um, <laughs> but your very brief peek through the door, you do see uh, down further down the hallway, um, you see a number of the dogs, the wolves, um, at the end of the hallway, reaching cool. towards the back of the room. All right, so it's safe to assume we probably know the exact locations in here. Yeah. All right. Oh, at this point, for sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I don't want to metagame it too hard where we're like, oh, we know it's in the corner there, so nobody go in the room. Um, yeah. All right, well, Pocket Turtle is up, unless they're uncomfortable going in alone. Um, We can always have Sally try and do a good grapple. She's going to go ahead. She is going to jump. Oh, I have. Be back in one sec. I'm just getting a drink. She's going to go. Ah! She enters in, shield up. Um, and she, you all just immediately see her, her form just get completely almost like squashed down by the massive, uh, bulk of this tentacle. Uh, that's seven, five, seven. Oof. She takes 15 points of damage from that one, but thankfully you guys are all still looking pretty sturdy. Come on. Oh, how do I do this again? There. No, that's not. How do I? Oh. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lower her health. How do I do that? There. Use the shrink computer. Four, fifteen, fifteen. Uh. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at Ephraim's health. That's why. Oh, yeah. What do I have her max health at right now? 66. Oh, she's she's pumping. Who is this? To me. Okay, so she's actually a lot healthier than me. He gets swamped by this tentacle. She's going to back up out of its reach, and she's going to cast Guiding Bolt on it. Bum, 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 bum. Shoot at it with Guidance. Is there an angle through this doorway as well where I could hit it potentially, or do I have to be inside the room in order to... Um, for the one that's attacking the, this one? Yeah, or... that one. The um, one it's a fire. little tight. You would definitely okay. have to end the space. Okay. Um, definitely hits. All right. And actually, she does a decent enough damage that the tentacle flops down dead. Perfect. Beautifully done. Um, Wonderful job by the pocketist turtle. Pocketist. Most turtliest of pockets. Um, but you hear uh, a screech and a low rumble is felt through the ground as 
yet another extension of this alien beast has been dispatched. Uh, you can all assume after your last number of victories over these things that the next one is going to be well prepared for radiant. All right. You guys pretty much have so, a... So that was necrotic? That was no, radiant. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah, my necrotic damage is what's up, right? Sure. If you have range damage, it saves pocket turtle from being thrashed by another uh, tentacle here. If not, then I think her inflict wounds is... It's probably still the most effective way, but if you've got ranged necrotic damage, it's... Or if she play. has, like, the Toll the Dead cantrip or something. Oh, mm. I believe she does have Toll the Dead, because I remember her saying that it's one of her favorite cantrips. But... Uh, <laughs> I... I've got Arms of Hadar. Oh, so okay. that's... Yeah. 10-foot sphere around me. Okay. But that's 3d6 of necrotic that I can do. We may want to try and do fire first, because I can... I mean, if they are getting stronger, I don't know if they're getting more health, but I can basically only do a d8 of fire damage at a time. So the only know. real difference, I would say... Or are they just getting all... easier to hit uh, or harder hitting? No, as far... It, it's mainly the you know, the type of damage that it's being, uh, like, adapting to. Uh, the only difference as far as, like, difficulty or health points or anything like that is that there were larger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like this one here and the one up in the um, top, like, Mage uh, Academy area. The much larger ones were a little hardier at... And uh, just a little hardier and harder to hit. But these smaller, okay. smaller, tent these ones are still a good, like, 15, 16 feet tall, you know, about 10 feet wide at the base, you know, as, as they, like, cracked and emerged from the ground. Um, we'll see if you've approached... Yeah, I was, I was getting close here. I mean, I'm probably... You're just I mean, if I, if I open the door, can I just shoot it from here without getting hit? Yeah, you should be. It's a close call. Like, this thing is just barely, barely able to to, uh, to make contact with you. It's like you can feel the, the rush of wind. Yeah, all right. Uh, so I know, I mean, no, if I, if I step forward, I can definitely get hit. Oh, yeah, but right now you're in a, okay. a perfect space. All right, well, I mean, if you guys don't mind, I'll just start shooting this thing with fire arrows and see if I can take sure. it down. Yeah. All right, I've got, well, I'm going to use my bow of method mayhem. It's fully charged, which means that for two charges, I can convert, so I can add a D8 of fire damage. I don't think I'm going to even bother rolling my piercing damage, because at this point, I think we've determined that it doesn't matter. Yep. So... Yeah, you can see the, like, almost knobbly um, plates of keratin, um, keratin-like armor that have surrounded this, uh, these tentacles. All right, have, well, uh, first, fermented. first attack is in. There's a dirty 20. Oof, definitely will hit. Seven points of fire damage. All right, it's looking pretty hurt, but it's still... All right. Writhing. That is two charges. All right. Next attack. Uh, 17. That'll hit. For four points of fire damage. Okay. You see that it's uh, having difficulty trying to... Like, it, it keeps trying to push and pull itself further out of the ground to try and reach you. Um, but it seems to be losing its... Or vitality it is no longer as feverly trying to attack you. Uh, it looks like it's on its last leg. All right, uh, does 14 hit? That it does. 
Okay, okay. that's for six points of fire damage. Perfect. That'll do it. You watch as the body or the the mass, the main mass of this tentacle is just charred and lit aflame by the magical arrows imbued with flame. Uh, and you watch as it slowly starts decomposing and what what you would normally think to be just like natural almost like digestive fluids come off of coming off of a of a body it, it smells more like a like a turpentine kind of smell um, a chemical agent of some sort uh, ascertain that it has started developing a an immune fire. Cool. All right. All right. That just leaves the uh just leaves the one outside. Doot, doot, doot. For our necrotic friends. Yep. You can hear the dogs barking from the wolves. I keep calling them dogs. You can hear the dogs barking. But yeah, I mean, my dogs are barking too. I did a lot of walking today. So. Yeah. I tell you, I got to get new work boots because my feet have been killing me at the end of the day. Ugh. I swear, working in a, in a kitchen environment on your feet all day mm-hmm. gets old real quick. <laughs> been doing it for like more than half my entire life in the kitchen. Oof. Anyway, you uh, see, uh, um, as trick as you start uh, coming down this narrow corridor, you can see just the last, like, glimpse of a wolf that is barking and snarling at this tentacle, and you just barely see the last moments of its life as this large, thick tentacle smacks down and squashes the dog or the wolf uh, into the ground. Skittish. Alright. Well. Alright. You see now this last remaining tentacle thrashing and I, I, I saw that measurement. <laughs> yeah. You see it's trying to <laughs> slam at the ground at you. Um, but you've all gotten used to what the ranges are for these creatures. We know what type of uh, creatures these are. Um, can I you, can make, you can make either a nature or a guest. Uh, let's see. Say nature oh or arcana check. Yeah, it's going to be a 15. Arcana? I have a negative one to both of those, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's um, a 22. Um. Okay, Ephraim, did you, did you do nature or arcana? It literally doesn't matter. They're the same uh, modifier, but I can pick nature. Uh, I wouldn't be sure. doing arcana as I'd be doing a nature check. Oh, so, as a ranger with a 15, uh, you can tell that these are vaguely animalistic. They resemble tentacles like any other mollusk or squid or octopus like creature, not mollusk, um, cephalopod. They definitely resemble them, but. You've never heard of any sort of land-dwelling octopus or subterranean squid-like creature. Um, It's very alien to you. Um, And speaking of alien, uh, Trick, with your Arcana check, uh, especially being a patron of a a warlock of sorts, um, you have Mm -hmm. been you have been shown visions and glimpses of godlike beings that reside beyond the you know uh, the mortal realm of existence 
you've been shown flashes, images, uh, interpretations of these otherworldly beings that try to coexist, try to uh, worm their way and intrude into the realm of man. Um, but the or... For what it's worth, I'm packed of the blade with um, the arch fay. Mm. So you've been shown these glimpses, these images of these other creatures that vie for power and that are being held at bay for the most part rather successfully. But as your patron has taken you on as her champion or their champion, you've been almost given this flash of insight to what is truly dangerous in this world. And you can just barely recall, as if it's scratching at the back of your mind, these milliseconds quick images of um, a squid-like entity, uh, a massive brain, a mass of tentacles, not so much like what we're seeing here, but more rounded, smooth, more alien like it's it's hard to almost grasp the thought of the description um but you can definitely ascertain or assume at this point that whatever this beast is may be one of those intruders that you've been warned against as a rather powerful creature as it seems Okay. Just a big tentacle. Okay. Um, I mean, or it's one of the old gods. Okay. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, if you're going to run in there, I could cast protection from energy on you. I, I don't think energy is the problem. I think squish yeah. is the problem. Well, I mean, it gives disadvantage from aberrations and celestials and elementals and that kind of stuff, but I wouldn't actually know that, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, hmm. Ephrael, to be honest, with your specific subclass and your training in, like, the knowledge of jumping realms and uh, detecting portals of, you know. Oh, I forgot to detect portals things. today. Damn it! I mean, you may have more of an idea about aberrations, celestials, and you know that sort of environment, if you will, as far as your own personal subclass no. and. I'm glad that it took me to the last tentacle to realize I had a spell that could potentially give all the tentacles <laughs> disadvantage on us when we moved in to attack them, but... Mm. <laughs> well, thankfully, you've all kind of gotten uh, uh, gotten used to what their attack range is like, so... Yeah. Uh, trick. Well, a trick is the, gonna the only problem is you. that, you know, if, if I'm going to do this, I gotta, I gotta step into that range. Trick. I gotta get up uh, close and personal. Yeah, somebody's got to. Yeah, I think all the necrotic yeah. spells are melee range spells, so uh, yeah. or yours is ten foot, but so is the tentacle. Yeah. Ah, whatever. All right, I'll, you know what? I'll touch you and I'll cast protection from good and evil. Uh, I'll take it on you, just to. I mean, Ooh, if we're playing, tingles we're playing a little bit. Melee range. Go ahead. Mm. Tingles right. a little bit. Something, so, something, uh, Archfey. Yeah. I think the only uh, the only effect that we really care about is that you get. Uh, or that tentacle, if it is in, in fact an aberration, as I believe it to be, I would mm -hmm. get disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Cool. All right. Let's step up. Okay. The second you take that step, I mean, that whole time of you kind of investigating ah! and and 
trying to rake your memory of what this thing could be, that tentacle has been repeatedly slamming against the floor trying to get at you. Close your eyes, you take a step forward to uh, do what you need to do, and without fail, you immediately get smacked against the side. Four, nine. Yeah, try to pick up. You get hit with for 14 points of damage. Cool. As it just Ooh. immediately swacks against you. Hungrily Ouchie. trying to push you into the ground like it did the wolf before you. I know a thing or two about tentacles. Oh. Uh, oh. Let's, let's cast some of my own. All right. Um, so, Arms of Hadar is um, an action... And it has a uh, strength saving throw. Okay. Morning, guys. This is not a porno, no matter how many tentacles <laughs> we have on this stream. Well, I mean... Uh, okay, technically, it's not tentacles of dark energy, but tendrils tendril. of dark energy erupt from me. And batter all creatures within 10 feet. Mm. And if I happen to be standing within 10 feet, bent over with my butt <laughs> towards him, then, you know, sometimes <laughs> you just get battered by tendrils. Uh, and, and if you just happen to squeak, oop, daddy. I dropped my bow on the ground. I'm sorry. I had to bend over and pick it up. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it was surprising. I couldn't help but go. <laughs> <laughs> so it rolled uh, a 16 for its strength saving. Okay, well, it takes half damage. All right. Go ahead, roll and... that damage. Woo! 11! Necrotic. All right. Hooray. So you see with the myriad of, of adaptations that this these creatures, whether or not they're individual tentacles or all of all you know belong to the same creature or not. You've seen plates of armor, uh oil retardant uh from or fire retardant oil. You've seen uh el elasticate its body and almost turn to rubber against you know force objects and things like that. Um, grain gain like gravel like consistency to ground lightning. Through all of this, you are still able to reach out, damage this massive creature with your necrotic energy. It still seems to be uh, up. It's going to try to attempt to smack at you again, um, as you've not been able to pull it with that blow. It does appear to be highly, highly damaged, though. I, roll. I have disadvantage. I just got that 20 on that one. Uh, that's only a 14 to hit. Uh, what is this, guys? AC. That, that just meets my AC. All right, then. So... Well, at least it didn't crit. Yeah, right? Yeah. Eighteen. Eight. Eighteen. Yep. Eighteen. Ochi. Okay, his tentacles are bigger than my tentacles. Um. Okay. Uh. That that's kind of. I I shot my load. Um, Does that hit our stay, or is it just a one? It's just an of? instantaneous. Oh, I might be thinking of Hunger of Hadar as the one that's an AOE. It stays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Uh, 
does Pocket Turtle have Toll of the Dead? Yeah. She does. Alright, well, let's just have Pocket Turtle cast Toll of the Dead from outside the range of Guess a Bunch. Uh, she, she can stand there. Toll of the Dead. I'm assuming you retreated after you blew your. Uh, I mean, um, you've used your. Tendon. Shot my load. <laughs> <laughs> Blasted your tentacles. You are you oh, shoot, you okay. You all do what you do. Bye. All right, shooting ropes. Um, this thing fails. It's save. Er, <laughs> I know, right? 16. Okay, so that, uh, maybe it's bad at dying. What? what? Oh, that's 2d12. It's never old. Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, Pocket Turtle starts shuffling her way down this tight corridor. You can hear the scraping of her shell against the rock, uh, rock walls and the wooden doors. Um, as she scrapes her way down this hallway, um, reaches out, tries to avoid the thrashing tentacle, and she just uh, grasps at the air. And you see this large, you know, spectral bell appear over the 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 peak of this tentacle, and just these rings of of, of vibration emanate from it and does the job. Ding dong. This thing finally falls. Cool. Alright, do we have a... To the ground. I guess one of these things is going to drop the uh, last piece that we need. Oh, yes. Actually, that's... I had forgotten to mention. So, with each... Um, defeat of the tentacles, you've been able to uh, gather the piece of the dwarven key that you know will actually combine together to create the the key to the mining district. So yes, you've collected all pieces of it. Now, whoever's been holding on to the main part of these keys, just give me. I believe you were as well. That's why yeah. I, th I thought it was Sally. Because you got the first piece. I got the first piece, so I think I was hanging on to it. I believe so. Alright, so what do you want me to do? So, um, just give me a, a straight dexterity check to try and form all these pieces together. That's a four? <laughs> So, Great job, Barbarian. Like, so our Barbarian drops all the pieces on the ground. Yeah. He, did, he should have said strength check instead. Then uh -huh. it would have been a five. <laughs> oh, no, a seven. Sorry, a seven. Oh, there you go. So, uh, like, like a, a toddler trying to push a square peg through a round hole, you watch as Sally just frustratingly tries to fit all these pieces together. I mean, they're simple, like, grooves and slots and things like that that should be easy enough to fit together despite the the number of pieces but i mean sally is just like you find her trying to like grind pieces together they're not fitting correctly you can tell that one or two of the pieces that she's that she's holding are upside down like it's, uh, it's i'll much. wander I over I was too busy playing with dolls to learn my shapes. <laughs> Do I don't think I have it, darn. Oh, I do. Let's see. Do to do to do to do to do. Oh well, of course that's not part of it, but um yeah, no. I'll I'll wander up, collect mm. the pieces. Um the does a 16 dexterity check solve the puzzle? 
Uh, yes, with a 16, you are able to uh, identify the certain key, the certain pieces that uh, slide onto one another and fit, click into place, and you're able to construct the dwarven key that leads to the mind. And that's without opposable thumbs. Whatever. <laughs> right. Well, you guys um, are good to go. You've completed the key and are uh, looking to find your way to the mining district. Um, typically, Making our way you can downtown. see like it's down downwards this way you've seen signs through you know out the the travel of this city this portion of the city that uh can all tell that it's southern southerly so you all head down there oh, oh nope. excuse me that's right. mike in our way downtown walking fast Damn it. Uh, there it is. Ooh. So you all find yourselves um, walking down um, just another like 45 to 50 feet worth of tunnel that lead to um, a large dwarven door. Um, this is uh, clearly, you know, the portion of the city that leads down to the mining districts, the large massive like 65 foot tall doors um, are a uh, depiction of these three uh, stout dwarves I mean they're huge in comparison to, to you all as you're standing at the base of these two giant iron doors um, but it's a depiction of three dwarves that are carving with large pickaxes um, on like the exterior of the door. So it looks like it's a depiction. It looks as if these dwarves have carved out the perimeter of the doorway um, and it has a series of dwarven texts written throughout and runes and uh, very, very, you know, uh, what how, what was dwarven art architecture considered or um, compared to like art art deco or something like that? Yeah, usually it's uh, art deco because art nouveau is the more rounded mm -hmm. uh, neo baroque uh, archways. Yeah, so this is very angular, very geometric. Um, this this giant uh, doorway, but in the middle is a dwarf, you know, uh, the two dwarves on the side are carving out the uh, perimeter of the door, and the door center has his pickaxe in hand, and he has this big, giant leather mitt of a hand reaching down towards the center of the door, and in the palm of his hand, you can see the um, the port or the key keyhole. Easy enough. Can insert the key, uh, and the door splits open with a hiss of a of uh, of like of a word pressurized air as the door opens, seeming like this door was hermetically sealed. And as it opens. The, the wave of air that washes over you all has a stench of rotting wood and rotting fungus almost like smell to it. It's very, very off putting. And oh, you find yourselves entering this large corridor that um, travels downward and you can see just beyond there it's very 
dimly lit here. Anybody that doesn't have low light vision or dark vision, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, navigating unless there's any sort of light source. But for those of you who do have dark you can see that just beyond this initial entrance into the mining district, you can see a number of dark-skinned dwarven-like dwargar um, dressed in plain clothes. They look almost like civilians. Um, you can see one or two of them are dressed as suspected miners, like their profession. Um, but with each turn of the head, each shamble of a step, you all can notice, or at least those with um, well enough vision, you can notice that the back of the head or on the side of the head, a large, massive chunk is just completely either like, like a softball-sized hole is seen either on the back of the head, on the side of the head, or right here in the front, like, lobe. You can see that each one of these creatures are well beyond a living kind of status. But they all move with intent. And with the opening of these huge, massive doors, they all turn to you rather sluggishly, but all turn to you, and I'd like you all to roll for initiative. Beyond that, you see massive, huge tentacle, much larger, much more prehensile-like in appearance than the previous one that you've just finished uh, destroying. This one looks a lot more muscular. Instead of just the thick slabs of meat, this seems like it's much more dexterity. Or dexterity. Boom. There we go. You all should be able to enter your stuff now. Uh, the turn order is blank. Blank? Yeah, you're going to have to delete it and enter us all again. Cause... Oh, really? Yeah. Alright, I thought I was doing something good by, like, pre-preparing it. No, it does not like it when you, like, close <laughs> out and do the turn order. It's stupid. Oh man! All right, that should be all of you. Trick BT7. I actually still Let's don't go. see it. No, it's still not coming up. Do you need to do a scene change or something before we can do all this? Oh, something silly like that. It. Hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe that's it. Boom! There you go. I forgot to move your characters over. There we are. Uh, Perfect. All right, there we hey, go. There it is. <laughs> you didn't bring what? us with you. Uh, to do. What have we got? I'll take that. Whatever. Right, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, and missing some. Two, two, three, four, five, and missing some. Two, two, three, four, five, and missing some. 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 Looks like Virgil's character doesn't have an issue, but we don't know what his uh. Well, that's right. 
I don't really know what he does. Your mom. Uh, oh. My mom's dead, so that makes him weird. I mean, we did just hit him with necrotic damage, so. Uh, you know what? If you're a... <laughs> You know what? I'm, never, I'm not going to ask the question. You know, my brain went to a place that I don't think people need to know about. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I think if we want to keep ourselves uh, in the public favor here, I, I, I'm not going to ask the question. Well, we can't get demonetized because we don't get money through YouTube. Uh, you know, All it's right. one of those clips that's going to resurface in 10 years when I get super famous that I don't yeah. want to have to explain, so. <laughs> I'm going to have to. It's going to put your Disney contract at risk. Mm -hmm. What the hell is he talking about here? There's, like, actual no justification. Yeah. I'll, I'll just be like, no, it's the context, guys. And the context is be <laughs> talking about dead bodies. <laughs> and oh, you what? always know that the context gets eliminated whenever something's brought up. It's true. Uh... Uh, there goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You watch this dwarvar uh, awkwardly shambles its way towards your group. Trick. Okay. Um, Let's see. What what uh, what things do I have left in the tank? Not a whole lot. So anyway, um, Eldritch blasting. Got a blast. I mean, when in doubt, I walk in and I start a blasting. Uh. Yeah, might as well. Um, so, Eldritch Blast! And... Winning in the mace. Uh, 12? That'll hit. Hey! I'll take it. That's cocked. There we go. Uh, no, no, no. Well, yeah. Well, I didn't hear the damage. Oh, sorry. Uh, nine. Nine. All right. Gotcha. And okay. obviously the one that's, that's you know, in front. Sure. All right. Okay. It is now the tentacles turn. All right. You watch this large live tentacle actually reaches out grabs onto this Dwargar over here in the back. I'm going to need... I'm going to need Trick, Sally, Druskvar, all to make dexterity saving throws. Um... Is this one You would the... have advantage. I would, okay. Yeah. You watch as it wraps and coils its prehensile appendage around uh, the creature. No, wait, and it, it's that one. It 14? Hooks it. Uh, 24. Four, okay. And, oh, just war. I'm, I'm doing just war. Ooh, he's going to fail. Three. <laughs> you watch as it literally lobs it. Is there a way I can do this here? No, no. Oh. Wait, I can. Oh, oh well. It 
lobs this zombie and smacks it into your group. Uh, it is going to do... Where are you in all this tentacle? Holy shit. Okay. Um, Gish? So, we like uh, that, right? <laughs> Trick, uh, Trick and Sally, you both passed. So you only take eight points of damage. Drusquar fails. Hmm? Drusquar fails and takes the full 16. I don't have his hit points. I don't have his information, so I'm just going to play it. All right. That is if this story. were an anime, I'd be clutching my side and wincing. <laughs> Sally, you're up. Yeah. Okay. Sally is going to go into a rage as she pulls out her <laughs> hammer that is in shape of a nice big boo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, who you? Who you attack? Uh, I'm going for that guy right up front there. The, this one. Okay, go for it. It's already damaged quite a bit. You see that it's barely being held together um, as like its clothes are tattered. It can see just obvious signs of decay. The large gaping hole in its head oozing fluid. Does a 17 hit? Oh, yes. Okay. For record, my 12 hit. Oh, sorry. Uh... No, that's why I'm sharing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be 12 damage. Gish. Dispatched. Dispatched? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Then I will move up to these two. Oh, okay. And I'm going to hit this one. Okay, do it up. Uh, that's going to be another 17. Oh, yeah. That's going to be 14 damage. Beautifully done. Yeah, 14. With the efficiency of a butcher trimming down the side of meat, you just walk through these gangs of undead, just toppling them down. I saw in the first one for you. <laughs> um, and... We both get credit for it. <laughs> I don't think I can do anything with the bonus action. Oh, I raged as my bonus Oh, action. you raged. That's right. Yeah. So, right. Uh, yeah, that will be the end of my turn. Right. He is dead. How do I take you out of this shit? Just delete the character. Boom. Boom. Oh, we're deleting our characters? All right, I got you. <laughs> All right, well, it's <laughs> it's Ephraim's turn. Okay, well, Do you need back. help getting back? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I can't <laughs> Um, uh, okay. I will, I guess, how, did this one that got thrown in here, that's alive, right? That's, it is, around. it is, no, it is just a mess of tangled, of, of broken limbs. It is completely, oh, I should do. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that was. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it rolled max damage for that throw. So oh, so it just absolutely was, obliterated the corpse like, that it threw. It no. jibbed. Fair enough. All right. Well, I will move forward, and I will um, shoot an arrow at um, this this one. Okay. Do it up. It's going to be a twenty-three to hit. Absolutely. So four. I think that's seven damage. Verify my damage. Yeah, seven damage. All right. You launch this arrow into the side of this beast. Um, still standing. 
Okay, I shoot another arrow. It's going to be a 28 to hit for Absolutely. 11 damage. There it is. You said it was this one here? Yeah, the one next to Sally. Dead. Cool. All right, I'm going to slide forward and then use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark on the big tentacle. Thanks, Effie. Okay. Cool. God. Any what? times. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Any time, Sally. Mm -hmm. All right, that's, so that'll be my turn. Oh, it's like something is All stuck right. in the turn order, <laughs> but I don't know where it is. Oh, it looks like when you're deleting the icons, it's not removing the creatures from the turn order. It's just removing yeah, the icons. No. <laughs> that's weird. It usually just deletes them from the turn order. That's fine. If it doesn't have an icon, you can just skip it. It's deleted for me. That's. Oh, I still see it, but maybe it's stale in the turn order on our end. And roll oh, yeah, 20. there just, we go. Oh, it just updated. Yeah, there oh, it goes. Okay. I was going to say, roll 20 Aww. probably just needs an I wonder if uh, I wonder if you need to like click next turn in order for all the changes to take effect or something. Yes. No. All right, that guy misses. Druskvar, he's going to... Four. He just barely, and he'll cast Shillelagh as a bonus action, and he'll swat at that guy. Miss. Uh, well, I got no extra. Okay, Pocket Turtle. She's gonna come over here. She's to cast Sacred Flame. 16. Definitely hit. 2 to 8. Oh. 4 points of damage. That's okay. Her turn. This guy. Ow. He's going to attack you, Trick. Action. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, that's going to be um, 18 to hit. Yep, that, that did. Okay, only does five points of bludgeoning damage to you. Because he just... Mm -hmm. This Dwargar miner slams its fist against your chest. But it is your turn to retaliate. Cool. Um, yeah, I am. Do to do. Morning. I am going to uh, stab it with a dagger. Do it. That's a 12 to hit. Yeah. So it hits. And that is six points of damage. Okay, it is still up. But you've managed to lodge your bleed into its person. Cool. Um, I'm going to use a cunning action to disengage. Gotcha. Perfect. And that's my turn. It is now the enormous tentacle. He is going to... Lash out at you, Sally. Rude. As a has a reach of thirty five. Um, how dare you? How dare it? I'll kill it. I'll kill it. That's gonna be a seventeen to hit. It hits. Okay. But I only take, take half damage. Okay. Uh, you take rage. 
15 points of bludgeoning damage reduced to would be seven, seven. right? A seven, yes. Thank you. Because you always um, truncate. And you are grappled. I don't want to be. While you're grappled, Bad touch. You're also considered restrained. I don't want to be, mm-hmm. so let's mm-hmm. like not. Not. Okay. Um, that is its turn. Sally, it is up to you. Now you can break out if you like. Uh, there's an escape PC. Athletics or acrobatics, whichever your choice. But uh, I think I'm just going rest- to. Oh, yeah, go ahead. While well, you're restrained. So is that disadvantage? Uh, yes. So you're going to have. A disadvantage on your attack rolls. Um, the creature is going to have advantage against you, and you have disadvantage on your dexterity saving throw. And your speed is zero. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to attack with disadvantage. Okay, do it up. First one's a natty one. Ooh. Okay. Um. This one is a 14. That'll hit. Okay. Uh, 12 bludgeoning. Okay. Ooh. No, wait, hold on. It's more than that. Uh, 14. Sorry, I forgot to add the rage. Okay. Yeah, that's the end of my turn because I really don't have any other bonus actions. Problem? Ephraim. All right, so um, it, the tentacle is uh, because it's grappling Sally. Is it? Did it retreat all the way back to where the icon is, or is it like? Uh, out across no, the no, floor? it's it's essentially like like slithered its way over. Okay. Slapped at against uh, Sally and started coiling around and lifting her up so it's still like in this whole area cool all right so then i'm going to use bonus action planar warrior uh, okay. against the big tentacle and then i'm going to fire two arrows awesome okay the lowest arrow is a 19 to hit definitely hits okay so that's going to be five nine uh, 14 points of force damage and 16 points of piercing damage. 14, 16, 30. Woo! Yeah, so that's going to be 30, 31 total damage. No. Uh, yeah, no, 30, 30, 30, even, 30 even. 30 even. Uh, wow. Huge hit. Awesome. Um, and Hooray, I get, see... to do the, I get to do the thing that I'm supposed to do, which is yeah. damage number. Uh, you can see hairs um, starting to form at the you know lengths of this tentacle, almost as if the the arrow that has pierced it, or the arrows that have pierced it, start to rip and like almost as if the skin of this tentacle is so stretched taut that the second it pierces, it like splits along the seam of it. Uh, it just looks severely injured. Um, it is now this tentacle. It's going to make attacks on you, Sally. It has advantage on these attacks since you are rude. I rolled, I rolled, I rolled two nines, so I miss. Yeah. And that's Josuar is going to hit it with a shillelagh, which definitely hits, and. The modifier with Shillelagh. Oh, yeah. He's already gotten hit. As it is. So. Bleh. Dead. Pack Turtle. Um, she's going to come up. Um, 
It's looking too hurt. Man, raging is so good. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. she is. She'll just cast Sacred Flame at it. Um, this needs to make reflex saving throw. Fails big time. Thank God. God damn. Sure right. things fail their saving throws for other casters. I know. I, I swear to God, it's, it's like old. <laughs> auto, auto autopiloting PT is it. <laughs> It's because, because it I'm, took I'm auto success. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the DM rolls, but it's working for player characters. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't help that you know this is a low-level multi-class, so saving throw is like. <laughs> uh, all right, this guy, this last zombie, still going to try and get at you, trick. Ooh, that's a natural twenty. Oh, gee. So that's <laughs> definitely going to hit. Don't worry, it's going to fail the saving throw against Secret Flame, but of course you'll get crit on your next turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, does your does it protect against undead? So I what? what? The, the protection the, from energy? Yeah. The protection oh, from I'm good and evil? I'm definitely not concentrating on that anymore, because I cast oh, Hunter's oh. Mark, so I'm not oh, concentrating okay. on protection right. from energy that's anymore. Right. It also only lasts okay. 10 minutes, so I don't know how long it took us to get the puzzle together. And yeah, I'd here. say, yeah. Even I imagine I probably did. would have stopped concentrating on it right after the last fight was over. Sure. Um, so you're going to get hit for seven points of bludgeoning. That lowers me perfectly to zero. No. Oh, really? I am down. He's just oh, on shit. the edge of... He, I'm right on the edge of death. I didn't even realize that you were... He took a I started the tonight... Yeah, I, I started tonight at full health. Oh, my. Probably heal up. So, I am in death saves. Gotcha. All right, well, it is your turn, so roll me a death save, then. Let's see. D20. That's a nat one. Oh. So with a nat one, you get two failed failures. Oof. All right, trick. That is your turn. Uh, it is now the giant tentacle, and it is going to lift Sally up into the air a good, like, 15 feet, and slam you onto the ground. Uh, it has advantage on this, because it's strained. Oh, my God, it rolled 2-7. Interesting. That's uh, the second time. Your tentacle's so fat, it could fall out of a boat and miss the water. <laughs> he actually just like landed himself down and cushioned it's, it's, my fall. Like, oh, oh my thanks. Oh, you cracked just, my back. Yeah. Thank you. Sally's oh. powerful quads just hit the ground and she just is like, oh, it's just like a regular yeah, right. quad, <laughs> baby. <laughs> like he's, like he's on a trampoline because that's gonna miss with a with a thirteen. <laughs> All but right. What going to do is is going to start dragging you backwards. No thanks. Uh, nah, so yeah, please two, don't. Three, eight, two, three. We'll just do it this way. Simple. There's half. Oh, they can do one more because it's got five. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, Sally, it's your turn now. You are still grappled and restrained. Okay, first hit with disadvantage is actually going to be... Don't forget that you 22. have access to... Okay. To my what? <laughs> uh, reckless attack. So you could... Uh, you can nullify the disadvantage, right? Can't, yeah, can't allow the disadvantage. Well, that's, it also grants advantage against you, but... The second hit will also be uh, a natty one. So just the one hit. Okay. So go ahead and uh, do your the damage for your first hit. 
you can tell that this thing is really, really struggling. Fifteen. From, uh, previous. All right, you manage to squeeze your arms out of the constraining, like, constraint, <laughs> <laughs> and and heft your axe up high. Or wait, is your axe or hammer? Hammer. You lift your hammer up high, and you manage to smash it down onto the arrows that are still jutting out uh, from the side of this thing. And you manage to push the arrows further into the, the flesh of this tentacle, which then just watches like, like a watermelon exploding from too many rubber bands. It just completely explodes in a, in a splash of gore and viscera as the arrows and the force of your hammer just blast that section of its tentacle apart, releasing you, killing you. Tired. So is Sally's thighs Woo! called rubber bands, or is that what? it was crushed like a watermelon between rubber bands? Uh, yeah. All right, uh, Sally, uh, you are free of your constraints. Thank goodness, I because if I didn't get out of that one, I didn't know where it was going to drag me. <laughs> uh, I probably would have killed it on my next turn with arrows, but. Well, it is your turn, after. Ah, okay, well, I need to kill something, so... Do it. Oh, is that a dying man that's out-edging me on the ground? <laughs> out-edging. Uh, so this thing is within melee range of me, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, I'll just, uh... I'll just take the attack of opportunity and step back. Nope. Ooh, that's gonna be a 20 to hit you, not natural. Yeah, it'll hit. For seven points of bludgeon. Okay, and now I will planar warrior two arrows the whole nine. Will explode this thing. Probably. Um, uh, my lowest roll is fifteen to hit. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'd be nine, ten, twenty points of damage, force and oh, piercing combined. Like, like a watermelon. This thing just completely crumples at the uh, strike of your arrows. Hooray! And then, um, um, with the end of combat, um, pocket I, I cast, I'll cast Cure Light Wounds on the, uh, oh, uh, the downed person trick. All right. You well, you watch as Pocket Turtle immediately rushes over to her fallen comrade, and uh, you watch as she lays her hands upon him. Excuse. Me. She's going to cast. What do you want to do it as? I'm going to have my do it as. From Cure Light Wounds. I'm going to do it anyways. Right. Well, she, she does extra secretly. healing with your. Yeah, it's fine, but I don't have a ton of use for my spell slots, so. Okay. All right, well, she's going to do it at third level. Boom, your wounds. It's 27. She also gets an added bonus to healing being a life cleric. Oh, where'd you go? So immediately you um, trick. You're going to heal 27 points of health. Two plus the spell is level 27. So 32 total. Uh, Stay with us, friend. <laughs> Just the flesh wound. Oh, that flesh is connected to something still. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I feel like going for a walk. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, if we... But if he's feeling better, I'll cast that cure wounds on myself then. Okay, go. Okay, it's still nine points. I rolled it. I rolled it already. <laughs> I, I clicked the cast spell button. Somebody's getting touched and yeah. getting healed. I guess it'll just be. I'll go to touch him, but Pocket Turtle will bump me out of the way, and my hand will just kind of come back around. And I'll touch myself on the shoulder. You could touch Ooh. me, Ephriel. 
okay. I walk up and I kick Sally in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love. Right. He's so, playing hard to get. That, with, the, with the adrenaline of combat fading. Do you actually need healing? I'll heal you if you need it. I mean, I'm not... Uh... Fine. All right. So here's what I'll do. I will... There I am. Um, oh wow that's a great roll i still have um, more than half health so it's okay like... well you said you can come touch me so i cast cure light wounds at second level and i infuse my foot so when i kick you in the shin it does uh 16 points of healing because i rolled double sevens on my cure light wounds that brings Ooh. me up to full all right well with the adrenaline combat fading and your attention now able to uh, view the rest of your surroundings, you can tell that amongst the the gravel and dirt and the packed earth of these walkways that lead into the mining district, you can see a like a crawling infection of this like purple blackish coloration of it looks like a mix of flesh and fungus that a slime almost that seems to coat the walls and creeps onto the floor the uh disgusting purple blood that uh drains out of the tentacle just stains the earth a dark pitch black um and you can tell that the, that strange waftness of smell that that first came over you with the doors open. You can tell that this is the source of that stench. Um, Stink. The whole like the almost the entire like surface of these tunnel walls and flooring is covered in this encroachment and you can see a clear passage leading further into the tunnels as uh, you, you Sally. well bah, 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 where's the fog of war there you go Gosh, get out of here. Turn order. As you round the bend. Oh, geez. You can see the full uh, aspect. Oh, geez. Of just this, the severity of, of what has transpired here. Why is this not working now? God damn. Oh, okay. that looks like mother brain. So, yes, as you look out into the rest of come freaking crack and trick. Oh, I see one. All right. Well, fuck it. Um, uh, you look out into the main like quarry of this mining district. You can just see like fields of this purple ichor, this strange flesh fungus like consistency that coats almost the entirety of this central area. You see now the populace of dirt ever so absent from your previous. Uh, previous exploration of the city you now see here in the mining district completely enthralled by what you now see as the source of this contamination a massive huge bulbous brain like creature that has multitudes of the 
thin, lithe, purple tentacles that writhe around it, um, slowly, like, uh, like a gliding over the floor and feeling it and sweeping its tentacles over the surface of this encroachment. You watch as it pulses and uh, like almost moves and, and rhythmically jiggles almost with a, like a heartbeat almost. It beats um, every uh, all the citizens and huge massive extra tentacles that sprout out from the ground seem to surround this entity and you all are invaded by this creature's presence in your mind you can feel it's like tentacles in, in and of themselves reaching into your brain you can feel its presence trying to dig into your minds and gain some sort of inheritance to your being. It's an ugly, invasive feeling. And you can't help but feel your stomachs drop at the sight of this. And you all need a roll of mission. Okay, this is going to take a little while for me to add everybody. Oh, oh. We've left the truck, everyone. We're outside now. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> You all should still be in the initiative, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I was able to change mine. Yeah. Apparently, uh, some high issues on our team this time. I got a nat 20. Whew. Heck yeah. Mine was a 19. I only rolled a 17. I'm slipping. <laughs> That's a lot oh. of dice. Me. Meanwhile, I feel like Trick would, would not be first off the blocks. Like, <laughs> like my, my gut Eldritch. feeling about <laughs> my gut feeling about this character is that he'd be like, "Nope, I'm out." <laughs> I already have problem with one Eldritch being. Do not need beef with others. I already almost died once. I'll pass. The zombies are one thing. I'll I'll be top tentacles, but mother brain, fuck that noise. <laughs> Unless you have some special MacGuffin that you have not told the party about. Alright. Well, once again. I'm hearing a lot of dice noises. I do not like this. Oh dear, he has drawn a trap. Guys are, are fighting against uh, essentially a small small town. Great. Yes. I mean, did you could you did you expect anything less from me, Mel? Yes, I did. Really. Yes, because no. of all the problems we've had with big combats. Hey, and no, well, no, it was actually, supposed to be a small combat, but every week that went by <laughs> that we didn't do it, there was another town member added to the combat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Trick, you are up first. 
Alrighty. Um, Actually, let's... I'm going to turn my ear off real quick. I'm getting really warm. Okay. Uh, let's, let's see. I guess... Do, do, do. To, to be fair, Mel, I've I've had this idea for for a while. I think it was just a a matter of time before I had a massive comp. Well, let's start blasting. Thanks. Um. So this guy over to uh, my right ish. Like this guy? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, Dirty 20. Hits. Cool. Uh, Suck 8 Eldritch Blast. 8 points. Yep. Got it. All right. Do you just get the one blast? Oh, because yeah. Yeah, I'm not level five in either of my classes. Gotcha, so, gotcha. <laughs> just the oh, one okay. attack. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for you? Uh, no, that, that, that'll do me. All right. <clears throat> Sally. All right. Going into that rage. And, okay. um. Good luck. Thank you for um, holding off the entire swarm of people. I mean,. I know I'm going to go for this guy, but, like, am I able to, like, step onto here, or is that, like, or is there, like, a spot where... Um, so, just for simplicity's sake, especially since it's already 10 o'clock, it's all one level okay. section. Yeah. Cool. Alright. So, two at Oh, hold on. I didn't move my stuff. There we go. Two attacks on this guy. All right. So the second you get within range, forgot these things are five feet. Giant I tentacle. The range was only ten feet. Damn it. <laughs> ten feet? No, this thing has a yeah, range of thirty-five. Feet. Thirty-five. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's going to miss you though. <laughs> but you watch as this large tentacle reaches out and tries to swap down at you, but misses. Okay. My lower of the two rolls. Look, this thing has a DC of less than 10, so... Oh, sure okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, You know what? I'm going to keep both of the rolls, but I I'm going to end up hitting two zombies, because I'm probably going to kill one of them. Yeah, yeah just do the first attack. Five, second attack. Six, Seven plus uh fifteen damage. Beautiful. Um, it is severely hurt. Still standing. Oh, this one is still standing. Okay, then I yeah. will roll the other one. All right, go for it. Thirteen. Uh, hits. No, that's damage. Oh, damage. Oh, splat. yeah. The lower of the two rolls was a of my. Attack rolls was a gotcha, um, gotcha. sixteen. So, okay. Um, I'm gonna do some just for a second. Um, do this. Anything else for you? Uh, I think I'm just gonna use the rest of my movement. Um. To get up to these two guys. And that's it. Cool. Oh, I should do it. Trick. Just went. Oh, wait. Oh, Sally and Ephraim were together? No. Oh, uh, well, yeah, we were. I was probably supposed to go first, but I'm not sure it really matters. Oh. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, Ephraim, your turn. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're stepping on each other's toes here. All right, no. so I'm going to reapply Hunter's Mark 
do the the big brain. Big brain. Okay. What's the range for that? Hunter's Mark is ninety foot range. Oh yeah. Yeah, and my it's the Planar Warrior is thirty feet. That's the one I need to watch out for. Ah, uh, okay. So I would have to move somewhere in the trick range to hit that. But for regular casting on Hunter's Mark, I can stay all the way back. So all right. Okay, two arrows. Um, one of them's a fourteen. It's okay. Then they both hit. That's going to be ten, eighteen, twenty-eight points of piercing damage. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Cool. And it'll be probably one of the ghoulies' turns. Uh, there. Okay. We've got, well, he's right here. So he's going to attack you, Sally. Doesn't move. That's an F20. Okay. Eight. Uh, nine points of bludgeoning reduced to four. Right. The older brain. It is insanely has five foot movement. Just then. He is going to I don't have what or uh, attack. Okay. Uh, I guess you just Are you allowed back inside the truck? Oh yeah, no, I gave up and uh uh Climbed into my passenger seat because it was cold and windy. And get that. That's just the ambience of the brain cave that's getting to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, it is. <laughs> you watch. Oh, you know, I'm not All sure right. I, like I saw that go to 60 feet. Yep. So. It is, you watch um, those who are in view of the mother brain or elder brain. Uh, you watch as it slowly spits out some tentacles onto the ground and drags itself just a little bit closer to the rest of you all. And you watch as it slowly contracts its body, its massive brain. You watch it as it all like flexes down. And then, as just as rapidly as, um, you know, uh, a, a whip almost, it extends outward and a huge psychic shock wave spills out over the entire cavern. I'm going to need everybody to make intelligent saving. Hey, that's the other one. I get my thing. Oh, 15. Okay, that is a fail. Great. I'm never passing. <laughs> Mine's a fail. <laughs> Mine's okay. a fail. Okay, wow, this is going to end a lot sooner than I thought. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's Six. the other one I even get, like, my, my bonus to. Eternal. <laughs> Uh, intelligence move she fails and Dreskvar would fail as well even if he had a really high intelligence okay Ooh, I'm gonna need so 5d10 mean 22, 32 points. You all take 32 points of psychic damage. 
Back in saving throws. Oh, no. And you are all stunned for one minute. Uh, at the at the start of your turn, you are all able to re try to resave. Yeah, so I'm down, so it doesn't even matter. Down. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, I'm at, I've got 31 hit points, so goodbye. Oh, okay. All right, well, and I'm luck. <laughs> uh, trick, you said that you're down as well. Okay. Uh, she had what did she have? She had fifty one, fifty one out of sixty six. She just took thirty two. So, uh, oh, 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 um, uh, um, oof. Damn, that did a lot of damage to her. That did a lot of damage to everyone. She is still. Drosquar. Okay. All of you who went down from that psychic blast, the second you lose consciousness and fall down onto the ground, your vision going blank, going dark. Whatever dreams or ever sort of space that you go to, when you blank out, go unconscious, or even when simply falling asleep, you do not find the comfort of that. Well, ah, you Edge Lord backstory. Yeah. Those were never comforting to begin with. Well... <laughs> You've saved me from my own nightmare. Oh. You've given me peaceful <laughs> rest for once. <laughs> I'm going to wake up well rested. <laughs> you you find no comfort in this darkness that envelops you. As okay, so as it's a day ending and why? <laughs> <laughs> a haze of purple smoke seems to cloud uh, your your vision, if you want to even call it a vision, your your perception? Your, your perception, yes, thank you. Um, and you can feel some sort of connection, some sort of forcible link that latches onto you. That's the last feeling that you perceive until you finally go fully uncovered. That is the brain's turn. This edder cap. Where are we? One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, it's, uh, ba -da -ba -da, it's 30. It has been. Okay, that's all I can do. This guy. Wow, it's going to rush towards. Down. down. Wait. Did did he run through my uh, five foot range? Oh wait, I'm dead. Well, yeah, you're unconscious. So. Or yeah, unconscious. So it's gonna go so, here. Right. <laughs> gonna attack you, Sally. Oh, misses. This one. You actually, yeah, it's going to go to you, Sally. Misses. You see him. All right, this one. Well, you watch as this huge spider like humanoid creature starts burly walking its way over and pushes these Dwogar aside. As it steps over to you, Sally. Ba -ba -ba -ba, multi attack. It's going to strike at you with a bite. These two massive fangs pierce down. That's going to be a 17 to hit. That'll hit. Okay, that is only three points of damage reduced to one. Plus 1d8 poison damage. 
four points of poison damage. Going to attack with a claw. What am I doing for this? Bum, bum, bum. Uh, that's also going to hit for seven points of slashing damage, reduced to three. This its turn. We have this guy over here. Blah, 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 blah. He's going to move away. Misses. Guy, where are we? Where are you? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Drusklar, he is going three. Go over here. Let's see. Um, he is going to, as a bonus action, should be able to do. Bear. Oh, All right, he is going to, as a bonus action, wild shape into a polar bear, big giant polar bear. Has, right here, he is going to go right here and attack this guy. The attack. D8. Gonna miss, but he does two attacks with claws, or one attack with claw. 2d6 claws. That'll hit. All right, it's looking pretty hurt. Okay. Uh, uh, get to you, so it's just going to stay in there. This guy is over here. It's going to one, two, three, one, two, three. Boom. Attack this giant polar bear. He misses. Tim, he gets to attack the polar bear too. Misses. Back turtle. Three, two, here. She has, let's see, she, she, she is going to cast Cure Mass Wounds, or Mass Cure Wounds, Cure Mass Wounds, um, fifth level. Should be everybody within 60 feet of her. That's everyone. All right. So. Nineteen. It is a fifth level. Team seven. So everyone. Oh, jeez. I just exited out of freaking freaking roll twenty. Uh, see ya. Look, the DM's gone. Everybody gets yeah. back. And beats up on the brain. <laughs> he can't stop us. He can't stop us. Quick, start deleting the tokens. <laughs> um, I'm the DM now. <laughs> um, everyone heals twenty six points of damage. Bye. Oh. Back. Hooray! And since we went down, we're not starting. Uh -oh. right? Do you get All to right. take actions when you get picked back up before your next turn? You don't, right? Oh, well, that's um, that's you. You can. Um, you're thinking of uh, Baldur's Gate three. Oh, is that just unique to that game? I guess it is. I think so. Yeah. Um, but. After that is her action. Bonus action. Does she have bonus action mass healing word and everybody's back up to full? Oh wait. No, she can't do that. That's two leveled spells. Oh. 
Yeah, it needs to be a cantrip. Otherwise, does she have what's her to channel? To yeah, I forgot about that rule. <laughs> Reserve life as an action, but as a legendary action, um, the elder brain is going to 20 feet of it. Bring within 10 feet of that creature, take psychic damage. So she, the elder brain, having formed a connection with a number of your party, is going to focus on Trick. Everybody within 10 feet of Trick. Um, 10 feet of that creature, 3d6. So, Trick, as you come to consciousness from the healing, your, the, the holy healing of your cleric friend, you regain consciousness, and within a millisecond, two, three milliseconds of consciousness, a sharp pain spikes into your brain, and you clutch at your head and a wail of psychic energy emanates from you and Ephraim, uh Trick and PT, you are all going to take 15 points of psychic damage as the Elder Brain uh, influences its psychic connection. Trick. It's Legendary action. Ooh. And everyone hears something which sounds akin to a cat's tail being stepped on. Ooh. That's right. Oh, it's going to attack and pull the bear. Ooh. Might actually hit. Oh yeah. Um, polar bear is going to take five points of damage. Yes. Guy. Two, three, two, three. I'm just going to go over here to you, Trick. Sally, if you like, you can make an attack of opportunity against this guy I as it needs like. to squeeze behind you. Okay, go for it. Oof. Um, 11? That'll hit. Ooh, lots of damage. Um, 19. Oh, nicely done. Massive hit against this guy. Um, you take off an arm and part of his shoulder as he continues, despite the pain and the, the grievous injury, he just moves forward and continues. Well, here... Three, one, three, one, two, three. Okay. This guy is going to make a tackle on you, Sally. Uh, that's a 16. Just hits. Right. That's only three points damage reduced to one. All right. Just the lair action turn. You watch... Feel the floor rumble. Um, everybody, see the oop. It's gonna reach. Oh. So you watch as these large, massive. Now these ones, like 30, 40 feet long, tall. These huge, giant tendrils are going to start swaying and slapping and 
like stomping at the ground with their massive bulk. Um, this this one is going to actually uh, it's going to go after you, Trick. Mm -hmm. See, Sally is well covered. Ooh, I did not hit actually. You see, that's a fourteen to hit. Yep. Oh, right. Two. Oh, well, at least you're up for a moment. Um, seven, eleven points of bludgeoning damage. Back down to zero. Yeah, oh, right. that's the exact math required for yeah, me. Right. Like, <laughs> <so much. Yes>. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> So okay. polite, it's exactly reducing me to zero every yeah. time. Well, Trick, you can make a saving throw, a death saving throw, as it is your turn. Yay! Okay. Seven. Oh, oh that's a fail. Uh, yeah. Ephril, you are just momentarily brought back to come. Uh, I mean, I don't like the way you said that. What do you mean momentarily? You mean I'm going to go down again? Is that... Uh, I meant to say... <laughs> you have... Uh, Based on how my turn went! Uh, you know... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess I'll... Shoot. I'm going to shoot the big, uh, the big thing. Uh, like, whatever. Um, Alright, I'll cast Hunter's Mark again to add the extra damage. Okay. And I'll shoot the brain... Uh, both attacks are going to hit with a dirty 20 being the lowest. Absolutely. Uh, only 22 points of piercing damage. Okay. And Ooh. then I'm going to run. Run. I'm going to retreat. How much can I move? Probably only 30 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to matter, but whatever. Okay. It is... Let's see. That's a good view. Do that. Uh, Oh, I have to see if this recovers. Uh, okay, Um, it's going to do a legendary action, the uh, Elder Brain, and it's just going to make a tentacle attack against... Oop, it's going um, it's going to make a tentacle attack against uh, PT there. So, roll. Legendary action. It is seven. It is 17. It's just her arm class. Well, she goes down. She is out. Conscious. Pocket turtle. Po pocket turtle is down. Uh, it is good. I didn't right. want to be picked back up again anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, Sally, your turn. All righty. Um. Okay. Did I hit this one already? That's right behind me. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, yes, you did, actually. I did hit that one. Yeah. Alright, let's do the first hit on that guy. Okay. It's gonna be a 15. Hits. That's going to be a 15. Damage. 
Oh, damage? Okay, it is. Yay! It was actually 16 to attack and 15 damage. Alright. Alright. Cool. Uh, my next hit is going to be on the Edder Cat. Got it. Mm. Hmm. That's going to be 15 to hit. That hits. Okay. And another 15 damage. Cool. Got it. Anything else? That would be it. All right. At the end of your turn, the Elder Brain is going to take another legendary action. Um, see. Um, it's going to make a tentacle attack against Druskvar. Still within range. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. That's it. Eight. Oh, what are you doing? Eight, uh, nine, oof, nine, sixteen, plus two, so eighteen points of bludgeoning damage against Driskwar. Ooh, he's got a pretty beefy health point. point. Well, he's nearing the end of that pool, though. Okay, it is now this guy's turn. It's just going to attack you, Sally. Oh, going to miss. It's now the Elder Man's turn. I'm going to see if it recovers its psychic charge, which it does. Uh, five. Do do that? Let's see. I'm lost. 60 feet. 60 feet there. Uh, yeah. All right. Everyone needs to make a intelligence saving. Just going to do a mind blast again. It worked so well before. Fail. Oh. You know what? I forgot to mention. Sal uh, Sally, you were supposed to be stunned for a whole minute. Yes, I was. Um, I forgot to do that. But all right. You fail. Yeah, I fail. Um, we fail, so you'd all right. Just bars fails. Trick and PT are already down. Um, did they take damage from this within the 70 feet, 30 feet, or 60 feet? Telepathic, duh, psychic energy. I mean, it probably depends on if it wants to do psychic energy to the people uh -huh. that are down, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it basically like a giant it yeah, it's an AoE damage. Yeah, so they would uh, trick and PT. You are both going to lose one death saving throw. Well, hold on, roll damage. If it hits their uh, hit point maximum, they die out, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, why yeah. stop with one death yeah, saving right, throw right. and you can insult <laughs> that insult? <laughs> if you roll for 50 damage on this attack with your 5d10s, give them a yeah. migraine so bad they die. Well, I'm interested to see because there's a you know a certain level of damage you might be able to kill me outright from being alive. So, actually, I'm not sure that's true. I think I have just enough hit points that even if you rolled maximum, I would cling to life that's barely. 10. 19, 29, 32, that's 40. 40 points of damage to everyone who failed. Which is everyone. Yeah, everyone. Druskvar turns into his normal person. And Sally, this is psychic damage. So you take the full. Yep, I took the full 20. Yeah. 20. 20. No, 40. it's 40. Or 40, that's what I meant. Um, yeah. I'm like dead to like 20 something. <laughs> Alright. Okay. I have a lot of hit points. So, 
Ephraim, Trick, PT, you are all still, or you all fall back unconscious. Um, and you all still have that link that seems to be connecting you to this alien entity. It seems to still be forcibly sharing the same consciousness almost, even though you fall out of consciousness. You can still feel its presence in your brain as you fall flat onto the ground. Um, that is going to be its turn. This editor cap is going to... Uh, it's going to turn and go to you, Sally. Um, you are stunned, so it actually will have advantage on these. Um... That's definitely going to hit with the 17 plus. Four. Three. So three points of piercing damage. Claws. Half to one? Uh, no, it's three. Oh, uh, it okay. was six reduced to three. Gotcha, okay. Hit the claw. Seven. Uh, and then seven points of slashing damage reduced to three. And five points of poison damage from the bite. Okay. Uh, it's going to make claw attack. Advantage. Uh, you take two points of bludgeoning damage, reduce one. This guy is going to make... Whoa. That one's going to hit... Bite damage. Seven points of piercing damage, reduced to three. One point of poison damage. Claw attacks on you. Miss... This one. Sure, I could do. Freaking dice on my paper. Miss. This one is going to go Druskvar. Now that he's back in his human form, that's going to hit. It's going to get six. Druskvar. He is. Hmm. Gonna do. What did I do? Uh, he used his second animal form already. Oh wait, no, he failed, so he stopped. Mind. Rare guy. Rare. Uh, Sally, you take two points of damage, reduced to one. This guy's going to attack Drusquar. Misses. Drusquar. God damn it. Oh, that will definitely hit. Five points of damage. Oops, no. PT is down. Fails. Second. Oh. That'll be her third death saving throw. Failed saving throw. She. No, that's her, only her second. All right. What are we going to do? All right, lair actions. Okay. All right, so lair actions. We have a tentacle going after Sally and a tentacle after Druskvar. Sally gets hit. Um, Druskvar does not. 
to do it. Uh, six, ten, five points of bludgeoning damage to you, Sally. I am right, at trick. one HP. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, trick, it is your turn. You have okay. a... Uh, I still have... I'm only at two. Fails. Right. <laughs> and... Come on. Woo! Net 20! Oh, shit! That's amazing. You actually gain consciousness with one hit point. Oop! Oh! So, you can, you can do something. You are up. Cool. I'm gonna cast False Life. Hmm? All right. And that maxes the... Yeah. So, and I rolled a four, so that gives me a whopping... Seven. Eight temporary even, hit points. Even better. As a legendary action, the Elder Brain is going to make a tentacle attack at Josquar. Absolutely hit since he's still. Uh, still. What do you call it? Stunned? Just 40. Then. Okay. Um, is that the end of your turn, Trick? Uh, yeah. That's, okay. that's all I got. After all, you make a save. Oh, that's a critical success, actually. <laughs> hey! All right. You got one hit point. Oh, that's I have a hit do. point? All right, I miss yeah. you, Step, and I fuck off. Okay. Save yourself for the campaign! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. I am going to use every action I have to dash and every bonus action I have to missy step until I, uh, until I run away like a baby. Okay, so you were... Let's see. You were right here. So you missy step 30. Uh, yeah, whatever the have range is. 60 more feet to... Uh, to get out if you use your yeah uh, yeah it's gonna be a full dash yeah okay is that the end of your turn yeah, uh yeah i'll see you i'll see you guys later all right <laughs> it was nice uh, knowing, it was it was nice knowing you but uh, this is clearly a lost fight i'll see you guys later or maybe i won't well maybe i will <laughs> <laughs> you might not enjoy it when you see us again oh, yeah. you know I'm definitely not enjoying seeing you right now, so I... <laughs> <laughs> um, as you um, pop up from your... Okay, as you pop up from your unconscious state, you find the power within your legs to push you forward as far away from this thing as you possibly can get. But in the back of your mind, still feel that tether, that connection, that odd alien like, uh, connection. Um, it's going to take a legendary action at the end of your turn. And slam a tentacle down on Sally. Definitely hits. You fall unconscious, Sally. Your last remaining hit point. Guy. It's not going to bother. Now. 
the elder brain is you um Ephraim with you being the last remaining um standing member. Oh well Drossbar is still he's got and I've got like nine points. That's right, you're you're up too. It recovers its mind blast. What? Oh boy. To do. Feet of it. Which it has a psychic leak. Projected Spanish doesn't want to do that. Oh, okay. This is okay. I see. So this is a legendary action. The story of a girl. Tax. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So in the the previous zombies turn. It's going to use its final legendary action at the end of its turn. You're, you're essentially 90 feet away. Mm -hmm. This has... It's going to use its last legendary action to do Psychic Pulse. The Elder Brain targets a creature within 120 feet of it, with which it has a psychic link, which it still is connected with you. Enemies of the Elder Brain within 10 feet of that creature take 3d6 hit points. So he is going to um, utilize its psychic link against uh, that is connected with you. And it's going to do. Uh, one hit point? Yeah, I'm down again. Okay. <laughs> Does 12 <laughs> hit points worth of psychic damage. And now it's its turn. And it recovered its psychic blast. So it's just going to do that again. Um, uh, trick, if you want to move. Mm -hmm. Uh, your intelligent saving throw. Sure. Uh, 17? That unfortunately does not make it. It's one off. Oh. I know. <laughs> um, Just put me out of my I mean, yeah, I'm not even going to bother, bother uh, Rolling. Yeah, so, no, I'm down again. Oh, uh, oh, Drossoir fails big time. All right. So we can pretty much exit initiative. No longer in combat. All of our heroes have fallen. As an epilogue, unbeknownst to any of our, our party members here, for the audience and our players alone. What happens next, you are all unaware of. Your bodies are picked up off of the, the spongy ground, the, the earth that's covered in this encroachment. Your bodies are collected, carried to the elder brain. Um, it takes some while. Um, Ephraim, even uh, as as a uh, a form of spite, even getting as far away as you could, it takes a while for one of the larger edder caps to track your body down and carry it all the way back to the mother bird. You all can. Watch as your bodies are slowly pushed into the lower portions of this uh, canyon, though, of the mining district. 
You had not noticed this before in the midst of your battle. That underneath the elder brain was a large gelatinous pool of that purple, brackish material. And as your bodies are recovered, they are pushed slowly but steadily into this thick, mush of a substance as it slowly encompasses your bodies. You can all feel, even as you are unconscious, you can feel that ever-present connection of the elder brain forcing and weaving its influence into your own mind. And as you are slowly encompassed and encapsulated by this encroachment. You can all feel a sense, a spark of of influence, of reconnection, of a revival almost. And as the camera pans out this semi-translucent encroachment, you can all watch as everyone's who's been submerged into this muck now, their eyes spring open, a pale white, no iris, and you can see just the slight purple tendrils of tentacles moving in through the sclera at the end. We will see these characters once more in a different campaign. And we will end there. Yay. All right. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for the finale of Over the Underdark, where I plan to have these characters return in a different campaign as evil characters. Yes, Greaves, it's, uh, it looks like Ephriel, uh, looks like you're going to need a replacement for Ephriel. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, I, I guess I'll make something, uh, in the lab. Let me think about it. <laughs> not necessary. Not, not necessarily. Uh, yeah. I have plans. <laughs> anyway, well, guys. Let's go to Thank you for joining. Uh, let's see what my calendar looks like. My calendar says that next Wednesday we will either be doing um, another session of Eberron or finishing Curse of Strahd. We will see. Ooh. And next Thursday we will be returning with Rise of the Rune Lords. Nice. Um, we will not be back in two weeks on the 11th. Instead, this group will be back in four weeks on April 25th. Ooh, wow. Yeah. All right. I'm like, nothing's going on that day, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. I don't have it. Everyone, have a great rest of your week. An amazing weekend. And in four weeks, yes. get ready for Avatar The Last Airbender! Yeah. Also, Happy Easter, everyone. Happy it was a celebration. Yeah. Happy Easter, this, everyone. This, this, this. All right. Um, I mean, I'll be able to say it again next week. Uh... But, um, happy early birthday, Butterscotch. Ooh. Kimmy's birthday will be on Tuesday, so we will get to celebrate with her on Thursday. And no, she does not get any special treatments because her birthday didn't fall on a Thursday. Oh, no, Kim. So, suck it. Have a great rest of your weekend, all right, amazing weekend, and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, goodbye.